Hey guys, uh, welcome back to 3D Tech Valley. And over here, we share tips and tutorials and reviews to help you get the most out of your 3D printers and laser engravers and also CNC machines. If this is the first time that you are stopping by the channel, uh, make sure you click that subscribe button and check out some of the other video content that we've posted before. All right, so the housekeeping is done. Let's go back to the main thing at hand. So today we're going to be tackling uh, honeycombs. Well, this video is a tutorial on how you can make your own honeycomb. If you're in the laser engraving business, you definitely know that you need a honeycomb with your laser machine, especially if you'll be cutting your plywoods or other materials. Now the issue is that the good quality honeycombs come at quite a high price. So for instance, I just checked the honeycomb for the Creality Falcon 2 Pro with a bed size of 500 by 500 millimeters. And I can see right now it's going on offer, but still at the offer, it's over $100. And then we have this one for the x D1 Pro. You can see it goes for $116. If you have like about 10 laser engraving machines in your workshop, then you can end up spending over a thousand dollars just for the honeycomb. And of course we know we'd rather put our money in buying materials rather than spending it on a honeycomb. All right, so instead of us going to budget for new honeycombs, we decided to make a budget friendly alternative. Uh, this DIY honeycomb will improve your engraving precision and prevent back reflections. And of course, it also keep your workspace clean. And the best part is you only need a few basic materials to build it. Uh, we will need some pre-cut wooden planks to create the frame. And you also need an aluminum sheet for the base. Uh, this sheet will uh, collect the debris and prevent damage to your workbench. You'll also need some aluminum strips to protect the wood from the laser beam. And then a wire mesh to act as a honeycomb grid. And of course, some basic tools like a saw, tin snips, screws, nails, a hammer, and a measuring tape. To get started, just make sure you measure the wooden planks carefully. They should be about the same size as the work area of your laser machine. So first off, we're going to start by arranging the pre-cut wooden planks into a square layout. This will form the base of the honeycomb frame. Make sure that the edges are aligned correctly for a clean and professional finish. Next, we'll have to build the wooden frame by securing the planks together. Just lay down the planks flat and align them carefully to form a square or rectangular shape. This will depend on the size of your laser engraver. To ensure that the frame is perfectly balanced and the corners are at a 90 degrees angle, you can use a carpenter's square or a right angle tool at each corner before you screw the planks together. This step is crucial for stability as if there is any misalignment, then the honeycomb will become uneven and this can impact the accuracy of your projects. And if you don't have a capital square, you can measure the diagonals of the frame. The two diagonal measurements should be equal, and if you find that they're not equal, then adjust the planks until they are. When you're confident that the frame is square, you can secure the planks with screws. If you're using a thinner wood, you can pre-drill the holes to prevent splitting and to ensure a strong durable joint. A sturdy and balanced frame will provide the foundation for the rest of the honeycomb. Next, we have to prepare the aluminum sheet that will act as the base for our honeycomb. This base is important for cutting debris and protecting your workbench from any stray laser cuts. Start by measuring the inside dimensions of your wooden frame carefully. It's important to ensure that your measurements are accurate so that the aluminum sheet will fit snugly without gaps or overlaps. 
You can use a measuring tape or a ruler to get the precise dimensions and mark them on the aluminum sheet with a pencil or marker. When you're cutting the aluminum, you can use tin snips or a metal cutting tool for clean and straight edges. If you're working with a thick aluminum sheet, consider using a cutting wheel or a jigsaw with a metal blade. To ensure that you are accurate enough, clamp the sheet to your workbench before cutting. This will prevent it from shifting during the process. And after you've finished cutting, you can smoothen the edges with sandpaper or a metal file to remove any sharp bars. This step is crucial for safety and ensures that the sheet doesn't damage the frame or your hands during the assembly. After you've smoothened the edges, test fit the aluminum sheet inside the wooden frame. Check if it's too tight, and if that's the case, then trim small amounts as needed until it fits perfectly. A snug fit will prevent the sheet from moving during use, and this will ensure a stable and reliable base for your honeycomb. Now to protect the wooden frame from the heat and power of the laser beam, you have to cut some aluminium strips to cover the top edges of the frame. Ok, now it's time to attach the aluminium strips to the wooden frame. These strips will protect the wood from the laser beam when you are doing engraving or cutting, and of course, this will in turn increase the durability of the frame. So start by measuring and cutting the aluminium strips to fit the top edges of each plank in your frame. You can use a ruler or a measuring tape for accuracy, and of course, tin snips or a suitable cutting tool for clean edges. After cutting, smoothen out any sharp edges with a metal file or sandpaper to avoid injuries during the assembly. To attach the strips, position each one along the top edge of the planks and ensure it's flush and aligned. You can use nails or small screws to secure the strips in place, and if you're using nails, just lightly tap them in at first to hold the strip steady and then hammer them fully once you're satisfied with the alignment. If you're using screws, then you can pre-drill small pilot holes to prevent the wood from splitting and to make the screwing easier. For extra stability, you can use a strong adhesive like epoxy or a heat-resistant glue before you nail or screw the strips in place. This step of course is optional, but it can help to keep the strips firmly secured especially if you are a heavy user in the workshop. Make sure all the strips are firmly attached and aligned. It's important for the strips to be aligned so that you can have a level surface for the wire mesh which will support your laser engraving materials. Of course, take your time over here, pay attention to detail as this will pay off hugely when you start using the honeycomb. The next step is to prepare the wire mesh which will form the top grid of the honeycomb. This part is critical because it allows airflow and minimizes back reflections while securely supporting your materials when you're doing your laser cutting or engraving. So you can start by laying the wire mesh flat on a stable surface. Of course, measure the dimensions of the wooden frame as the mesh needs to fit precisely on top. Mark these measurements on the mesh with a marker pen or a tip. And for accurate cutting, we recommend using wire cutters or metal snips. Ensure each cut follows your mark closely. To keep the mesh from shifting as you cut, you can secure it on your workbench with clamps or heavy objects. This will help to maintain a clean straight edge and prevent unwanted cuts. After you've cut the mesh, inspect the edges for sharp or jagged pieces. You can use a metal file or sandpaper to smoothen these areas so as to reduce the risk of injury when you're handling the honeycomb. And once you're satisfied with the mesh, place it on top of the frame to test whether it fits. It should lie flat and cover the entire frame evenly without overhanging. If you find that it's slightly too large, you can trim small sections until it fits perfectly. Just take your time to prepare the wire mesh accurately so that the final honeycomb will function effectively and it will also be safe for the users. Now that we've prepared the wire mesh, it's time to attach it to the wooden frame so that we complete the honeycomb. You can start by placing the mesh on top of the frame. 
Ensure it is aligned and covers the frame evenly. Once the mesh is in place, secure it using small nails or staples. Start from one corner and work your way across, pulling the mesh out as you go. This tension will ensure that the mesh stays flat and provides even support during engraving or cutting. And if you have a staple gun, this will be the easiest and quickest tool for the job. To avoid sagging, you can secure the mesh at regular intervals along all the four edges. Make sure you check for any loose or uneven sections as you're working. If you find any, you can resecure them or add some additional nails or staples. For even more durability, you can apply a bead of heat resistant adhesive along the edges where the mesh meets the aluminium strips. This is an optional step, but it will help to prevent the mesh from lifting during use, especially if you anticipate you'll be doing some heavy laser cutting work in your workshop. Once the mesh is fully secured, inspect the honeycomb for any sharp edges or protruding nails. Smoothen this down with the sandpaper or a file to make your honeycomb safe and user-friendly. And at this point, your honeycomb is ready for testing. I will start by placing it inside the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. The snug fit of the honeycomb ensures stability and provides the perfect platform for laser engraving or cutting. In this test, we'll cut a piece of plywood to see how well the honeycomb performs. As the laser cuts through the material, you can see how the honeycomb design prevents the laser beam from reflecting back into the material, and this ensures a cleaner and more precise cut. The aluminium base we installed earlier also plays an important role here as it catches any debris and protects the workbench from the sharp laser beams. Once the cut is complete, check how the honeycomb remains sturdy and intact even under the high-powered laser of the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. And by the way, uh, we're using a 20 watts laser head over here. Uh, this test just confirms that the DIY honeycomb can handle professional grade projects with ease. But that's not all, I uh, will next test the honeycomb with the X-Tool D1 Pro, this time using a 10 watt laser. And just like before, we'd already made another honeycomb for the X-Tool and it fits perfectly inside the machine. The honeycomb is stable and provides a reliable base for our cutting project. Now as the laser cuts through the plywood, you'll notice that the debris is efficiently collected on the aluminum sheet. This keeps the work area very very clean just like pre-made honeycombs. But unlike those pre-made honeycombs, this DIY version delivers the same functionality but at a fraction of the cost. Now from this test, we've just proven that the honeycomb is flexible and works seamlessly with multiple laser engravers, including high-end machines like the X-Tool D1 Pro and the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. And that's it, you've seen how to build a DIY laser engraving honeycomb and how it performs with both the Creality Falcon 2 Pro and the X-Tool D1 Pro. This is a cost-effective solution that improves engraving precision and keeps your workplace clean. Of course, having saved you some money up front for the pre-made uh, honeycombs. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. And of course, we'll be happy if you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment in case you need any explanation or have a, anything else to add about the video. Thanks for watching and happy laser engraving.